Hello everyone and welcome to episode 25 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we have an Android special and this is part one where we're going to be looking at um, apps that integrate with our Raspberry Pi containers. We are going to be looking at an app called NZB360. Um, it's available on the Play Store. NZB360 is a Android app that works to control all of your containers that integrate with NZB in their services. So basically if you have radar, sonar, lidar or um, NZB Get, as well as some torrent clients. It supports Qubit Torrent and a few others. So from this central place within your phone, you can then search for any, any content that you want and you can download it from there. So you don't even have to log into interfaces or anything like that. And you can see the whole progress through the application. I think NZB 360 is a fantastic application to use to basically centralize and control everything around your um, NZB get and downloading your content. So to use the full features of NZB 360, you will need a pro license. It comes at a very small fee. It's a couple of pounds or a couple of dollars. Um, it's worth every penny. You know, I think it's very good. I've got no affiliation with this company. So if you guys go pro, it's your choice. So you do need to have that in mind if you want to use this application to control your Raspberry Pi containers. So just a quick disclaimer today, guys, we do not condone piracy in any shape or form. So please make sure you have the right licensing to download the content that you are downloading from NZB Get. Um, this is for educational purposes and it's all to do with showing how the Raspberry Pi and its containers can integrate into other devices like Android, etc. So if you guys are ready, we're going to crack on today and we're going to have a look at NZB 360 and how we can install that on our Android device. So now we are on our Android device, we are going to come across to the Play Store and we're going to do a search for NZB360 and we're going to install it. And now it's installed, we're going to open it up and we're going to click Get Started. So as you can see right here, it asks you to add the services. Now the services are what we have in the containers. This can be NZB Get. Radar, Lidar, Sonar, as well as Qubit Torrent, and these are the ones that we're going to be integrating today. So if you have a look at here, it gives you a little bit of a, a focus here, telling you to click here to add the services. So we're going to do that first, and we're going to come down the dashboard and click add a service. So the first service we are going to install today is going to be our NZB Get client. So we are going to need our username and password for this. And we're going to need to know where we've installed this on our Raspberry Pi. This will only work within your network. So make sure you are connected to the same network that your Raspberry Pi is connected to. So in here, we're going to be using our local Raspberry Pi address. So you guys are going to need to know where you've installed NZB Get and what your IP address and your port number is. So we're going to come back to our um, Raspberry Pi and we're in Portainer. And we're going to come down the line here and look at NZB Get. Now we can see it's on port 6789. So this is the um, URL that we're going to be using. So it's our IP address plus the port number. And then from here, we're just going to paste that in here. We're going to delete everything in there and paste that in. So all you need is your IP address and the port number and then click OK. Then if you've changed your default username and password, you need to add that now. So I've changed mine. So mine's admin. And I'm going to enter my password. And then we're going to click test connection. And there you see it says connected successfully to the primary address. So all you need to do now once you've tested it and it says it's connected is you need to enable it. So tick this box here under enable NZB get. Now if you click backspace now and backspace again. Now down here on the bottom left if you click this menu it will show you your services now. So you can now see this is directly connected now to your NZB container on your Raspberry Pi. So if you come to history it will show you what you've downloaded and it will all be in there. So you can see what's downloaded today uh, etc. So we're going to click on our menu now and we're going to click settings this time and we're going to scroll down and we're going to install Sonar now. Now with these applications you're going to need an API key and I'll show you how to get that. So we need to know our IP address and our API key. So we're going to have to navigate back to our server and we're going to go back to Portainer again and we're going to come down the line to where it says Sonar and you can see here it's on port 8989. So now we know the URL, we're going to copy and paste this from here. And then we're going to paste that into this here. So just remove everything in there. So we've got our Raspberry Pi IP address and our port number. And press OK. Now we need the API key. So we're going to go back to our server again. So we're going to come down into settings. And we're going to go down to where it says general. And then that's how we're going to get our API key. We're going to click on this little icon here that will copy it into our memory. And we're going to go back to our 
Android device. And just under API key now, we're going to click on there. And then we're going to paste that API key in. And we're going to click Save. So we're going to click Test Connection. And there you are, it's connected. So all we've got to do now is click on Enable. And if we go back again, and we come back to our menu here, and you'll see that we now have Sonar. So if you click on there, you can see everything that you have on your Sonar. So all your um, TV series will be in here. It shows you what's upcoming, what's missing, and the history. So what we're going to do next is we're going to install Radar. So we're going to do exactly the same as what we've done. We're going to go into back into our server, and we are going to go back to Portainer. And see that Radar there is on port 7878. And we're going to copy this URL. So we're going to copy the IP address and the port number. And we're going to come back into our Android device. And we're going to paste that in here. And then press OK. And now we need the API key. So we're going to go back again. And we're going to go down to where it says Settings. And then General. And then we are going to copy this API key from here. And then we are going to go back. And we're going to click on API key and we're going to paste that in. And then click Save. And then we're going to test connection. And it's connected. So then we're going to enable this again. And we're going to go back. And just to double check, there's our radar. Click on that again. And there's all our films. If you give it a second just to populate the artwork, it'll all come in. And there you go. So, going back into our menu, back into settings again. And we're going to come down the line. And we are, I'm going to leave LIDAR. I'm just going to do sonar and radar. And I think you get the idea. So if you want to add LIDAR, you can do. Um, what I am going to add now is our torrents. So we're going to come down the line. And we're going to click on torrents. And we're going to, where it says torrent client. Now we have Qubit Torrent installed. So if we come back to our server. And we go back to Portainer. I can close these off now. So here's our Qubit Torrent client, which you can find again through here. So there's Qubit Torrent. It tells you it's on port 8282. So here is my client. I want to add this so that I can download torrents as well. So we're going to copy and paste the URL for Qubit Torrent. And then we're going to come back into our Android device. And then under where it says Torrent Client, we're going to click this box and go down to Qubit Torrent. And then where it says Primary Connection Address, okay, we're going to paste that in making sure to remove the trading slash at the end, and then press OK. And now, if you've changed your username and password, you need to put your custom username and password in there. By default, I believe Qubit Torrent is admin, and then admin, admin. So I'm just going to put mine in, because I've changed it. And if we test the connection, there you go, we are connected. So we're going to enable our Torrent Client too. So if we go back, and back again, and click on here. Now you can see that we have now have our NZB get downloader, we have our Qubit Torrent downloader, we have our sonar and our radar. Now the good thing about this client is if you've got torrents for instance, if you download a torrent from your phone, you literally can download the torrent from any source through a browser and you can just upload it straight here and you can watch it download and it's, it's really good for torrents and, and using it on the go. So if you come over here, you can click on add torrent from here. You click Arrow Torrent or a magnet link and it will start the download process. Now, it won't download to your device, it will download onto your server. So, you know, it's really, it's really good. Now, my favorite part about NZB360 is the dashboard. Now, what's nice about the dashboard is if you don't know what films or what kind of content that you're interested in, this can give you recommendations, it can tell you what's popular, and you can click on it and download it straight from within the interface. So this is one thing that's lacking when it comes to, um, you know, using um, radar and lidar and things like that, is that you need to know kind of what you want. Um, it doesn't really recommend much. I mean, it has a sort of a very small section, but it's not... I don't think it's, you know, it doesn't give you enough really. Now what this does is it looks at what you've got, the content you've got, and it gives you recommendations, so it's really good. So we're just going to have a brief look at the dashboard. Um, at the moment we are in the tab for the radar films. So as you scroll down, you can see that it tells you if you want to go straight to the radar application, which you can do. You can add a movie from here by clicking there, and you can add it or discover it. But that's using the radar interface. Um, down here you have what you've recently downloaded which is quite handy, so you can see if anything's been pulled down that you have on your watch list. Um, downloading soon will say anything that's coming down the pipeline, um, you know, and it'll pick that up for you. 
The upcoming movies will show you anything that's upcoming. You can grab them. Anything that's popular at the time, you know, you can get that from there. Recommended for you. So these are the stuff that you haven't got. Now, recommended for you is really good. Now, with NZB360, it gives you some really good recommendations. And you can come, these are ones that you don't have on your server already because obviously you've added your source links. So if you add all your source destinations to this, it will know what you've installed. It will look at what you've installed and give you some suggestions on what you already have. Um, it's really good for trying to, you know, to add into your collection. So, you know, it gives you some good recommendations. So you can come through here. And then all you'll need to do is if you like a film, for instance, you'd click on it and then add it to Radar. And if you have that pro um, license, then you can just download it straight to Radar. You can watch it in real time. And then once it's downloading, you can come back here and you can, sorry, you can click on this menu down here and you can come down to NZB Get and you'll be able to watch it downloading, unpacking and renaming it. And it will then push it down to your Plex server if you set it up from like how we've set up our Raspberry Pi series. It's absolutely fantastic. So just going down the dashboard again. Now the anticipated, obviously, is things that are up and coming, things that are going to be coming in the future, and the things that are going to be popular. So you can click on most anticipated, and you can click on something that's coming down the line. It's not actually exists. I mean, some of the artwork won't populate here, but that's fine because it's just, you know, if something gets announced that it's coming, um, then it will be in here. So you can see like Avatar 4, things like that, Avatar 3. This is only because it's been announced and talked about, it's been added to the list. So what you can do is you can come in here, for instance, let's say like this film here, and you can click on Add to Radar, and that will monitor it and check it. And as soon as it becomes available or a release, it will pull it down. Now, please, again, as I said, please remember this is for educational purposes. Please make sure that you are following the copyright laws in your country and that you are using everything that you download from the internet, that you have the correct licensing to do so. Now, moving across, we're going to go on to Sonar here. And again, it's the same as what we've just seen there, but obviously for TV um, series. You can click to go to your Sonar application. You can add a TV show directly from here. You can look at what was recently downloaded and you can see what is airing next. You can also see what is popular at the time. Again, that has the same um, same benefits as I've shown you before. It comes from the, the, the movie database and you can have a look at anything that's popular now and you can download it. Um, the trending new shows, obviously brilliant. Anything that's new coming out that's popular, you can have a look and add that to, to your Sonar. And then the most anticipated at the bottom again all the upcoming shows things that people have been announced you know things that have been announced and things that people might be interested in in the future so you can monitor things from there the tv series and as they become available it will pull it down so on the final tab here we're looking at the server it shows us our download history it can show you what days anything was downloaded um, it also shows you the amount that was downloaded and also shows you the amount that was downloaded on that day so you can see here the exact amount see there's a gig installed just under a gig on Friday. So yeah, it's great. And then down here you have disk space and it shows you um, what's on your root partition. So you can see I have 92.3 gigabyte free and you can see that I have 41% um, pretty much all down the line. I mean, um, these might vary. I don't think these are correct values actually. I think it's just showing you the overall space used on the drive rather than the individual folders, even though it's showing you the folders. So maybe that is something that's gonna be patched in a later version. But it does show you that there's new, that what updates are available for your containers. So I'm gonna come back to the menu and I'm gonna click on settings. So within the settings, you can do a few things that are quite useful. You can follow the NZB360 subreddit or the Discord channel and you can also set up notifications if you want to enable that now as I said you will need a pro version of that if you are interested in the pro version there was a few reasons in here that explain to you why you might be interested so you can come through here and look in your own time you also support the project which is quite good as I said it doesn't cost a lot for the pro um, and again I don't have any affiliation with NZB360 at all so coming down here just looking at the servers you can add multiple servers to this so if you had a couple of Raspberry Pis doing different jobs you can add them in here um, you can have you can set up wake on LAN configuration so you can wake up your server which you know my server's always on you know servers should always be on anyway that's the whole point of a server um, but that could come in handy for some people who just use it now and then when they need it to download torrents etc you can add another NZB client which is called Saab NZBD you can integrate that too you can integrate several different torrent applications as we've seen before and we can also integrate Sickbeard, Lidar, Bazaar, Couch Potatoes and Headphones. You can also add your indexes directly here as well if you needed to. Personally, you know, you're best off doing that through your container applications, Radar, Lidar, etc. 
So as you can see, NZB360, it can be a useful application to use. Now, bear in mind that this is just within your network. Um, if you guys want to use this outside of your network, you are going to have to have a VPN for security. So that's something I will be showing you on the channel at a later date. I'm not quite sure when, but I, it will be coming down the line. So next week, I'm going to be looking at a couple of the premium applications from Plex. And I'm going to show you how to integrate your server into them and use them when you're on the go. You can actually use them remotely without a VPN. So that would be interesting to look at. So stay tuned for that. So this brings us to the end of today's episode. If you guys got any benefit out of it, please hit that like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified of any new content that we upload. In the description box below, we list out all the hardware that we have tested with our Raspberry Pi series and we know are compatible with everything that we've shown you on our channel. If you guys use any of them links, they are Amazon affiliate links. They come at no extra cost to you. But if you use them, we do get a small bit of commission back for each sale. You guys have been using them links and we really do thank you and appreciate you using them. So all that leaves me to say now is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.